Welcome to the F5 Networks Advanced Web Application Firewall Demo Series. In this demo, we'll show how to block forceful browsing attacks using file type enforcement with Big IP Advanced Web. F5 Networks Industry Leading Web Application Firewall. This is Demo 9 of the AWEF Demo Series, and it's intended for new to intermediate level Big IP Advanced Web users. For optimal viewing, we recommend using full screen mode. The environment for this demo contains three devices. A Windows workstation will be used to make application layer attacks including forceful browsing. These requests will arrive at the F5 Big IP system, running advanced WEF. The Big IP system sits in front of, and protects, the backend web application. The Big IP system, using its full proxy architecture, examines every request and can block all malicious requests, and prevent them from going to the backend web servers. Let's start by attempting a couple forceful browsing attacks against the web server. Forceful browsing is an attack technique used to gain access to restricted pages, or other sensitive resources on a web server, by attempting to access the URL directly. We'll use the damn vulnerable web application, or DVWA for short. Instead of logging in, we'll attempt to access a couple of confidential web server configuration files. First, we'll try to access the php.ini file. We are successful. Next, we'll try to access the readme.md file. Not only are we successful, but we've accessed a file with important and confidential information about the database server, such as the administrator username and password. We can copy this password. And then attempt to log in as the administrator. We are successful. You can see at the bottom of the page that we logged in as the user ID admin. These are examples of forceful browsing attacks, which exploit web page files that are not accessible through web page links, but are in fact present within the web server directory. Now, let's protect the web application. First we'll take a look at the virtual server we were just using to access the DVWA site. This is a standard HTTP virtual server that listens on 10.1.10.35. On the Virtual Server Security Policies page, you can see that we already have a big IP advanced web security policy attached to this virtual server named 09A File Types Security Policy. Let's examine the big IP advanced web allowed file types page. This page displays all the file types allowed in this security policy. Currently, there are no entries on the page, only the asterisk or wildcard entry. This identifies that the security policy is currently allowing all file types to be requested by users, which includes .ini and .md. Now, let's add file type enforcement using the learning and blocking settings page. This page is used to configure nearly all security policy settings. We'll expand the file type section. This option enables Big IP Advanced Web to learn about specific file types. It's currently set to never, wildcard only. This means the security policy will allow all file types. Always specifies we'll create a comprehensive file type whitelist that will include all file type entities used in the web application. For all file type violations, we'll select the Learn, Alarm, and Block checkboxes. These violations enable Big IP Advanced Web to identify, and then block, requests that violate specific attributes about each file type, such as the query string length of the request. At the bottom of the page, in the Trusted IP Addresses section, note that we are using a trusted IP range of 10.1.10.0 for building this security policy. The Windows workstation is using the IP address 10.1.10.199, so all requests we submit will be considered trusted requests. 
will now save and apply the policy. When updating a security policy with Big IP Advanced WEF, you must always click Apply Policy to see the changes in the application. We'll now access the web application to begin adding file types to the security policy. We'll then return to the Allowed File Types page. Several file types have been added to the file type whitelist. A few things to notice. The wildcard entry is still on the list. Big IP Advanced WEF needs more traffic to stabilize the file type whitelist. All file types are still in staging, which means that their attribute values, such as request length and query string length, will not be enforced. There is an entry for no ext. This is the file type associated with requests without a file type specified, such as www.f5.com. And finally, notice that all file types have a maximum query string length of 1000 bytes. We'll now access the web application once more. This time logging in. And accessing this web page. Which you'll notice is an HTML file. When we reload the allowed file types page, you can see that there are four new file types added to the whitelist, including HTML. Now, we're going to simulate numerous requests to the web application using an iMacro in Firefox. We're using these requests so that Big IP Advanced Web can further learn about the different file types. After reloading the Allowed File Types page, notice that the wildcard entry is no longer on the list. This means that Big IP Advanced Web considers this list complete, however it's still open to learning about new file types to add to the list. Several of the file types are no longer in staging, which means Big IP Advanced Web will enforce the different length limits for each file type. And in addition, the query string length limit for the no ext file type was changed to 2048. This was due to requests from the trusted workstation that exceeded the default 1000 length limit. Let's view the Big IP Advanced WEF event log. We'll select this log entry for the vulnerability slash XSSR URL with a violation rating of 3. And then examine the HTTP request. This user submitted a very long review which was sent to the web server using a query string. Several requests with query strings longer than 1000 characters caused Big IP Advanced Web to modify the query string length limit for this file type, which was no ext. We'll now run the iMacro again. And then open the Allowed File Types page. All file types are no longer in staging, which means Big IP Advanced WEF will enforce the different length limits for each file type. At this point the file type list is stabilized. We'll now open the security policy, which we can quickly get to by clicking on Application Security. We've been using automatic policy building. However, now that the security policy is stabilized, we will disable policy building to avoid learning any new file types. Let's test the new security policy settings using the web application. We'll attempt to access the php.ini file again. The request is now blocked by the Big IP Advanced Web Security Policy. We'll also try to get the confidential database details from the readme.md file. This request is also blocked by Advanced Web. These two file types are not on the file types whitelist. 
the web application is now protected against forceful browsing attacks. Next, we'll attempt to submit an extremely long request that violates the query string length of 1000. The big IP advanced web security policy also blocked this malicious request. This is known as a buffer overflow attack. We'll now return to the big IP advanced web event log to see why these requests were blocked. First, we'll filter the log files to view only blocked log entries. We'll start with the request for the php.ini file. This request was blocked because it was for an illegal file type. The illegal file type was INI. Next, we'll select the request for the index.php file. This request was blocked because it violated the query string length. The file type that was violated was PHP. This file type expected no more than 1000 bytes, but this request was for 1515 bytes. Thank you for watching this demonstration on using file type enforcement to block forceful browsing attacks using F5 Big IP Advanced WEF. We encourage you to watch additional AWEF demos, and for more details on how Advanced WEF can protect your web applications, contact your F5 Network Sales Account Manager. For questions or comments about this video, contact Chris Manley at the email address at the bottom of the page.